Hello, and welcome to the Isto James channel. I'm Isto James, and if you're here because you're looking for some step-by-step -step instruction on how to create something just like this, well then, grab your paintbrushes and something to drink, because you're in the right place. Music! to remind everybody that this video has been made with chapter selections and it also has a countdown meter to remind you or signal that the next step is coming up. So if you're painting along with me, feel free to pause it or fast forward, whatever seems fit for you. This video has been created for that. I'd also like to mention that if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. It's free for you and it means the world to me. Okay, that being said, let's talk about the supplies. Let's start with the very basic first. You need something to paint on. I'm using a 12 by 16 canvas, but really whatever I teach you here, any, any canvas size that you have will work just fine. You're also gonna need some paint brushes. You can actually do this entire painting with just three paint brushes, it's that simple. I have a one inch flat brush to help me with my background. I have another brush that's just like that, just a little bit smaller. And then we have a detailed round brush. As long as you have these three, you should be fine. Of course, don't forget a glass of water to rinse your paint in. You might want a towel or a paper towel work quite nicely for this project as well. Now this is the most valuable tool in my arsenal. It's a piece of chalk. If you paint with acrylics at all, this is a lifesaver and you're gonna see why. Also, I have a paper plate just to put my paints on. You can use a palette or anything else that you have around the house. I just like to use this because it's easy to find, easy to clean up, and if you have to step away from the painting for any reason, you can use another uh, paper plate to cover it up and keep those paints from drying out while you're gone. And then of course, let's talk about the colors of the paints. I did design this painting for all skill levels to be able to enjoy it. So I'm just using first level or beginner sets for these paints. Any of these brands will be fine to use. There's nothing specific. I did leave in the description below though some of my favorite things to use and some great starter kits if you need to get started. So don't forget to check the description below for those links. Now the colors that we're going to need, I tried to make this very simple as well. Just a yellow, an orange, a red, a purple, a brown, a white, and a black. That's it. That's all you need. You should have all the tools. Let's jump into it. The very first thing that we should be doing is prepping our canvas. You're gonna dip your paintbrush into the water and then spread the water onto the canvas. We only want a thin layer here. Don't add so much water that it becomes soaking wet. I use the one inch flat brush and it helps me cover a large amount of surface area much faster. I'd like you to use this time practicing your brush techniques here. And what I mean by this is that I'm using up and down strokes and left and right strokes using the broad side of the brush. It's kind of like I'm sweeping a floor. And you'll see later why this is helpful when we lay down our first layer of paint. Now before we lay down our first color of yellow, just feel the canvas and make sure it's not too wet. Again, we only want a thin layer of water to help us spread this paint around. If it's too wet, the paint just won't bind to the canvas and we'll get some parts that are difficult to paint over. I'm going to leave the bottom just a little extra wet so I can show you what not to do, but also how we can fix this later just in case it does happen to you. Now that the water is down, I'm gonna use my yellow and paint and cover all of the canvas using the same technique as the water step. My goal here is just to cover up any white showing from the canvas itself. I'm using globs of paint on this initial step. Don't be afraid to use a lot and load your brush up. We want enough paint here to cover the whole white background. 
and we want to have enough left over to make sure that it mixes with the next colors that we lay down. And of course, for myself, I like to paint the edges. You do not have to do that if you don't want to. It's just something that I like doing. Uh, when I hang up the canvas on the wall, I like to see that the edges are covered. Unless you're gonna frame it, then you don't really have to worry about that. But up to you, there's no right or wrong. I want the background to have a nice gradient effect, meaning it gradually fades from one shade or color to another. So I'm going to have to, I'm gonna to have to have it be a bit darker, or saturated at the bottom, and then let the lighter color uh, get more prominent as it goes up. So to do that, I'm gonna grab my second color, I've got some orange, and I'm gonna lay a lot more down at the bottom just to add some more dark shades there and I'm gonna mix that in directly with the yellow. Now you can keep it simple and just blend all the colors like this and going back and forth but I like to start in with this X pattern. This technique helps me with the background uh, it just kind of helps it to create blurry or smoky style background. It's a really cool effect that I actually learned from my wife um, but I loved incorporating it into this painting and it will give your background more character, but up to you what you like to do. I'm gonna go just use this style a lot and take some time to blend this until it looks nice in my eyes. can see that I want to take my time here and make sure you can still see these brush strokes coming through. Uh, I am blending these colors, but you can see these really cool textures coming out. I'm going to do my best to keep those around, but of course I have um, some OCD myself, so I'm going to keep blending this until it looks great. Now I don't see much of the gradient that I wanted initially, so I'm just gonna add some more of our mid-tone color, or orange, to the bottom half of this canvas. I don't wanna go higher than halfway during this step because I wanna keep the top part brighter so that gradient really pops out.
All right, at this point, we should have a really nice blend going on. The background does not need to be perfect. I do wanna keep some of these brush strokes popping out and not lose all that cool texture that I created. So let's move on to our final color, brown. This will help complete our gradient. I'm gonna add some more to the top as well, maybe get kind of a vignette thing going. Uh, the important part is just not to use too much. The brown should add some flavor to the painting at this point and not just completely take it over. I'm still gonna use that, that X technique. No matter what technique you choose to do here, just keep mixing it until personally you're satisfied with the outcome. But I'm gonna take some time here to just blend these colors until I see it's fit. Please take the time to do so yourself. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to play with just some of the colors here. I'm gonna load my brush up with whatever color I think I might need more of. Then I'm just gonna let the brush do all of the work and let the paint run off of that brush until it's gone. Uh, when I do it this way, I get a better blend of all these colors and I really keep that smoky blurry effect that I'm looking for. So if we need to add more colors to help balance this painting, then so be it. <laughs> Just take your time and keep going until you're personally satisfied with the outcome. I'm gonna take a few more minutes here just to balance it and then we will move on to the next step soon. Now, if you find that your paints aren't blending like this, it, it really should be blending smoothly. Uh, you should check to balance to see either if you have enough paint or enough water. Uh, you can easily do too much of both, but you should be able to find a nice blend using the paint and the water that these colors blend together really easily and you can move your brush around um, quite easily without too much movement or um, just see how it mixes. Now I did mention though that I used too much water here at the bottom and I did struggle with this as I'm, I'm trying to blend all of this and it won't take um, to the middle and the bottom. So if this happened to you, there's a few things we can do to remedy this situation. Our big problem here is that we have too much water present. You can grab a blow dryer and just dry out the bottom a little bit. We don't wanna dry it completely though because we still want this paint to mix. And so, the next method that you could probably do, or that would probably work better, is just take a few minutes and with a dry brush, now remember it has to be dry, not a wet brush, add some more paint directly to that brush and then smoosh it down into that area and try to create those brush strokes. If that's not working for you, I really think the best way is just to grab your towel or a paper, paper towel, or the, the, the towel that you have, and just dab it till it's a little bit more dry and then you can add some more brown paint to it later as well.
All right, for extra credit, you do not have to do this next step. If you love what you're seeing, just go with it. Um, but I like to add just a few highlights of dark brush strokes and gives it some artistic flair, I guess. Uh, I think it's cool to see some of these brush strokes and maybe it adds more character to this painting. There, so I'm gonna go in with some extra dark colors. And this is not to try to over blend. Mm, I might come back later. Up to you if you wanna do just some fun highlights. It's really up to you. Now, if you're painting along with me in time, this should be enough time that our backgrounds can be done. I think we should definitely start the next step. Otherwise, I will be mixing and blending this all day. Now, before we start the next step, please, please, please make sure your background is dry. For this part, I like to use my heat gun just because it's nice and fast. You can use a blow dryer as well, and if you don't have either of those things, you can just use your paper plates to air dry it or just give it some time. It doesn't really matter how you dry it, just make sure that it is dry before we move on to this next step. All right, well, here's an extra credit step. Now that it's dry, if you'd like to add a few more texture lines or brush strokes, this would be the place to do it. Because it's dry, these new lines, they just won't bend into that paint as easily. So you can make some really beautiful contrasting lines. Some bright yellow lines in the shadows, and maybe some dark brown lines over the bright areas. 
you can really make this background your stage and let it dance out for you. If you choose to do, excuse me, if you choose to do this step, just remember, dry it completely before painting your image. Otherwise, it's just gonna blend into the background with it. You can see right here at the bottom, this was the spot that just had way too much water on that initially. So you can see that some of that paint isn't binding there. All I'm gonna do here is just try a few different colors and try to mash some just raw paint into this section to cover up that binding area. And it kind of works to your favor. It's kind of like Bob Ross said, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. So that's what you can do with that point if you ran into that problem as well. So this was my troublemaker spot. This is where it was too wet and I couldn't get that paint to really stick. Now that it's dry, I'm just using straight paint on top of this and emulating those brush strokes and it worked out in my favor. I think it looks pretty good. Now again, make sure your canvas is completely dry, then grab your chalk, and your paper towel or cloth towel, whatever you have. I like to have my cloth with a dry side and I have a damp side. I'll show you why. We're gonna use our chalk to draw out some construction lines. This is gonna help us easily create our wine glass. And if we mess up or don't really like what we saw, then we can just erase it pretty easily. Now, just make sure you don't push too hard with the towel or the chalk because we can still smudge and smear our background. So be careful with that. Now we're going to use our big paintbrush as a ruler or a straight edge. So pick a point in the middle of your painting and mark it with an X or a dot. Then put the brush just at a little bit of an angle leading away from that center mark. You do not want it to go straight down. When we do this, we want to have a little bit of a tilt for our wine glass and this will help us to see the length or the stem of our wine glass. Have the line go all the way to the bottom and then we're gonna add a cross section line. This will determine how wide the glass will be. This line is only gonna be a few inches long, so just try to make it even on both sides of that center line. Yeah, and this is going to be a guide to help us find the top of our glass. Now we need to find the bottom of the bowl of the glass, so I'm just gonna eyeball it, but mark a line going down that is about the same length as that cross section line. You can also just cut the long line in half if that's easier. Just to create that bowl shape, we're just gonna connect those lines that we made just like this. And now we're gonna draw some curving lines away from the bowl that will make the stem of our glass. Next, we want our glass to look 3D. There's a little trick we can do to accomplish that. You can use your chalk, or if you have this brush, you can use it as a marker, but it's about an inch in length. We'll mark the two lines, one above the cross line and one below the cross line. Then we'll play connect the dots and make an oval. This will create the illusion of the top of our glass. Now, if you don't like how it looks, I don't really like what I did here. So as an example, we can just erase and start over.
The goal here though is to make the smoothest line possible when creating the markers. It shouldn't have a V shape or L or sevens connecting in the, at the points. <laughs> it should be one smooth line all the way through. So go ahead and reshape any of the lines that you want and just make sure that it's a shape you like. When you're satisfied with how it looks and we can erase those construction lines. And now we have a shape that we are comfortable painting. Now we are not done with the chalk just yet. Let's create a path that our wine will travel like it's being poured out in a really fun way. When I draw this line out, I pretend like I'm pouring the wine and the chalk will follow the same flow pattern with a liquid follow, you know. Anyway, making sound effects could really help here too. <laughs> so just follow through like the wine was poured too hard and it's just creating a little bit of a backsplash right out of the glass. Then maybe a couple of drops made it out as well. Just find a shape that reminds you of wine. And you can make it twist and turn if you like. It's, it's really up to you. You have creative control. But now we really have our image that looks like it's ready to paint. Now I'm going to use my smaller flat angled brush. It looks just like the big one we first used, only smaller and a little bit of an angle cut on it. You can use a regular flat one, it works just as well. Really just use whatever brush you're the most comfortable with, there really is no right or wrong. I'm going to use this angled brush though. So let's start with the wine first. I found that it's so much easier to add a little bit of water into the paint on our plate. Just use your brush like a spoon and add a few scoops of water into the red paint, then just mix it in um, with a little bit of water that we added. This will thin out the paint just enough that it spreads around so much easier for us. Then we're just gonna paint all the wine areas we drew in with the chalk. Try your best to use long, smooth brush strokes. We do not wanna be in the habit of making tiny, short lines to fill it in. Don't worry about details right now, just get that red filled in as much as you can and cover up the background. Please, please don't forget, long, smooth strokes. Because we're working with a three-dimensional image, there are some lines we should consider when painting this in. The bottom half of our oval is in the, it's the front part of the glass, therefore the wine wouldn't cover this up, or at least this part of the oval. You can paint around it like this, so you can see your construction line, or go ahead and cover it up just like we did over here on the right side. We just need to remember where that construction line is, or we'll just redraw it in later. Thank you. 
when I add these lines in, I'm just trying to keep them smooth. Remember, I don't want to do short, jagged strokes. Even though we're using a smaller area, I still want these shapes to be smooth. If you're talented enough, you can get the corner of your brush here for these smaller things. But, you know what? You don't need to do that. Remember, you can always switch brushes and do what's best for your own painting, depending on your wants and needs. There's no right or wrong. So let's use a smaller detail brush here, just so we can make sure these spots get filled in correctly. I want those smooth edges more than anything. All right, I went back to my flat brush here because our base layer is now complete. So we should add some depth into our wine. Remember, keep your brush wet and we're going to mix in some white into our red until we get this really nice looking pink. My goal with this is just to add depth, so I only want to stick to the left side and the top part of this wine pour. I don't want to cover up all of the red that we just put down. This is just going to help it look more realistic. Just use this pink as highlights so we can see some surface area and dimension with this liquid. I'm just playing around with trying to find the pink that I would like. It's up to you what kind of pink colors or tones you would like. You can even go back and use just straight white to highlight some of this wine, but I'm just trying to find a nice balance between the white and the, the red to get a nice pink that seems congruent with this, this color that we first laid down. This is mixing in with my red still a little bit, and that's okay. I'm gonna use that as a blend. I do wanna keep one solid white line here just so we can tell that, hey, this is the top of the wine. This is where it's flowing from. Now let's, let's add some shadow into our liquid. I think we're done with the highlights. Don't get carried away with that. I'm gonna grab just some our dark purple here and mix it in with some red because I don't want to go straight with purple yet. I just want a darker shade and I'm going to stick to the bottom of the bowl here and maybe the middle of our pour stream as well. And you can see it's kind of mixing in there. That's what I want. I want to find a nice blend, but you can always go darker if you need to just like this and then up the middle there and just simple long strokes. This dark color will just add a lot of tonality to our wine and depth. Oh, looks nice, looks really nice. And 
it's just not as dark as I want at the bottom yet, so I'm gonna add just some more dark shadows to get that balance right. All right, and that's it. Let's not overcomplicate this. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna move on. Go ahead and clean off your brush as much as you can. We are going to reuse this brush for the glass, so make sure that it is perfectly clean. Now, since we're painting the glass next, we don't want these colors to mix. So take your time and let your painting dry completely or use your blow dryer and it goes much quicker. Uh, just make sure it's dry before we start the next step so we don't have too much blending of these colors. I put some heat on it. I put some heat on it. Singing songs helps the process go a little bit faster. That doesn't rhyme. Now I'm gonna grab the chalk again and redraw the oval lines that I need. I know where they should go, but I'm using the chalk always, using the chalk just keeps me from doing it wrong. So I'd rather do it this way before making a mistake with paint. It's better to be safe than sorry. So we are only filling the bottom of the oval because it's the front of the glass. The top of our oval was to mark the back of the glass. And we don't necessarily see that, so we don't need to include it when we do this step. Now that we are starting on the glass, make sure your brush is clean because we will be using white first. If there's a little bit of red left, it's okay, but try to get it as clean as you can. We will do the same trick again by adding water into the paint. I'm gonna add even more water this time because I want this white to act almost like an ink pen. We're gonna paint smooth glass. So the more wet this white is, the smoother it will come off the paintbrush and it will make your life so much easier. If we don't add the water, eh, well, you'll end up with something not good that I'll talk about in a moment. Now, I want to load my brush up with this thinned out paint, and I'm going to use the straight long side of the brush, not the broad flat side. Because it's flat, it'll help keep a straight line better than any other brush would. So make sure it's loaded up. This next part is imperative. Use a practice canvas or even a paper if you need to first, but you'll want to follow these chalk outlines with long, smooth strokes. I hope you've been paying attention. Do not use short, jagged, fast strokes. This will not uh, create the effect we want of smooth glass. It'll make it look like it's made of wood or splinters. We want this to be nice and smooth. So go slow if you need, but try to make it from one point to the next with only one stroke. 
Just remember that this is watered down paint and it should come off the brush smooth. And you shouldn't have to force it. Um, and that watered down paint will definitely make it easier to create these lines. Right, as we fill in the top part of this glass, we made an oval with our construction lines earlier. The bottom part stays solid and we can see all of that part of the glass. The top part of our oval is now the back side of our glass. So we want the wine to be seen here, not the glass. Make sure the red wine is covering up that white line. And don't paint the areas that have that delicious wine. You just shouldn't do it. <laughs> if you did paint over it just a little bit like I did, don't worry, that's okay. You can always come back and paint over that area with red paint. Now we can add a few details to the edge of this glass while I have some extra white paint on this brush, but we're gonna do details a little bit later. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Uh, de details are just my favorite part of the process. <laughs> I get rushed through that. So speaking of, this is a, a good time to add a few details into our wine before we go any further on this glass. So I'm gonna grab a smaller detail round brush now. I have a thicker one and a really thin one, but any one will work really. So we can add some bubbles and highlights to our wine using white and maybe adding a little red to make a bright pink. So I'll just mix a little red and white together and I can make, yeah, that, it's a good looking pink and I can make that area brighter with just a few little bubbles inside the glass and a few strokes on the, the splashes here. Again, even if you're adding highlights, just make sure that they are smooth lines. I can't implore that enough. It just, it just makes everything come to life. <laughs> All right, now I mentioned bubbles. Let me show you how to do some, just a variation of bubbles. To, to do it the way I do it, I'm just gonna load up my brush it's kind of sloppy really and then draw little circles and dots the paint really will kind of do its own thing here and it works to my advantage because the bubbles wouldn't be that bright we're not making we're not making cartoon bubbles so just a couple of circles and dots should do the trick got the splashes but we can't forget the the main pouring area of our wine either so we should just add a few highlight lines to that as well remember these are only highlights we should only have a few lines maybe down the left side to capture some depth and some realism of it and maybe a few more strokes of white and pink along the edges inside the glass and splash and that really should complete the wine portion of this painting. Just remember to keep these lines simple, long, and smooth, and just don't get carried away and make the whole thing about highlights. <laughs> Well, I want to add uh, one more bright line to the edge of this wine, just so we can see that there's a top as it goes into the glass. But then I'm going to just take my own advice and not go overboard. This wine looks pretty good. I'm ready to move on. Now, let's talk about this glass. I'm going to show you a really cool trick. First, we need to thin out our black paint by adding some water, just like we've done in the past here. 
Don't worry about using dirty water. We're using black, so it won't matter. Just don't be shy with the water. You want to have it in there pretty good. I'm going to test the viscosity of this paint by rolling my brush around in circles. This is also a good way to just load up your brush with paint evenly. So when you start, you'll want to have plenty of paint on that brush, but you shouldn't see any clumps or any big chunks. It should just be smooth ink looking black. Now, I hope you've been getting used to painting smooth lines. If not, this is a good time to pause the video and practice drawing some lines before you start. What I'm going to do here is just go in and make a black line right down the middle of our white line. You now, do this to the best of your ability, of course. Um, you can see that I'm not doing it perfect either. I'm still concentrating on doing those smooth lines, but oh, it's just not perfect, and that's okay. The method of the madness here is really that the, it's just the same as a wine. We want to create depth and realism within this. Just, just remember to do smooth strokes. I can't implore that enough. If you do short strokes and, and make it look jagged, your, your painting is just going to end up looking like this. Now you can use the flat brush here as well. Um, it might be a little too thick. You do want this line to be thin. So up to you what works best, but we're just gonna try to just keep it a thin black line to the best of our abilities. And you know what? I'm going to show you a couple of things that if you make these mistakes, how to fix them. So I think for this next part, Please don't paint along with me. These Once I finish this top edge, I'm going to show you some things that I see common mistakes with my students. So the first one is, you, you know, they might get a double line. Um, maybe you've had way too much black and you covered too much of the white. Or you, you could also do stuff like just go too far with shading. Maybe you get in here and your, your mind wanders and you start doing these shading things that you weren't really quite ready to do yet. These are all pretty common mistakes that I see happen. If this happens, don't worry, we're going to fix this. <laughs> I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So what we're first going to do is we're going to just take a quick rinse with our brush and make it make sure it stays wet. Now, everybody should be painting along with this point at this point anyway, not only for fixing problems, but for the, just the next step. Once you add some white to the brush when it's wet, we're just going to go over those black lines again, and it should naturally blend and wash these tones together. So this white and this black should come together and make kind of a gray. The cool thing about it is it won't stay the same consistency throughout all of those lines. We're going to get something that um, looks realistic and blended really easily without us even trying too hard. You can even go over those shaded areas with this gray or this white, and you can just create some blended edges and tones. So feel free to go back and forth with this. Really, the goal is just to make them everything smooth lines. All right, so here comes my favorite part. We're gonna do highlights and details. So clean your brush as best you can. Then we're gonna go back for some white paint. Remember, it's okay if some pink gets in here because it's just gonna look like a reflection of the wine off the glass anyway. So pick a few places on the wine glass that would be reflecting light and add some lines. I always like to do it at at least one big one near the, the bowl and then maybe one up the left edge, but really it's all up to you, uh, whatever you feel best. Again, just don't overdo it. You can also change out your brush for the small flat one and use the broad side to your advantage for this step. Again, these are just highlights and reflections. Don't get carried away and do too many. It's gonna ruin it. They should just be highlights. Keep it simple. Maybe add a few dots. And at this point, you should have a really 
amazing painting in front of you. Um, and you should be happy because it only took about an hour. All right, just a little bit of extra credit for those of you who feel they have a steady hand. You can use this flat brush with some white paint and go back over your glass lines one last time just to make sure that it looks extra, extra smooth. Just be careful not to make everything white again. You, you do want to have those grays and blacks in there to help keep it looking dynamic. And now that our painting is done, make sure that it is dry. I always love to put some heat on it because it helps set the paint. <laughs> you can even add a layer of varnish to it for some extra shine if you really love what you created. If you have some chalk from our construction line still left over, you can wipe it away using that damp cloth or paper towel. Just make sure that it is 100% dry before you do so because it would be a cosmic shame for you to smudge your painting after you made it all this way. And that really should wrap it up. Hey, if you were painting along with me or you were just watching and you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, let them know that we're out there. Also write in the comments below what your favorite part was or maybe what you struggled with or even maybe a painting you'd like me to teach in the future. Whatever it is, just let me know you're out there. I would love to hear from you. So I'm gonna say goodbye for now but I will see you next time.